Oi, oi. I like to do a handful of these anti-post insight videos throughout the season. I think it's important to take stock of the markets at in different times. And you can't always put a timestamp on when those will be. Sometimes it's what events have happened recently. Um, sometimes it will just be a bit of a feel. And sometimes it will be a mark in the calendar where there are some races coming up. Basically, right now is a fine opportunity, I believe, to talk us through every single of the major markets on every single day. So that is what this episode's about. I'm going to screen share in a moment. I will be showing odds checker. I'll be showing Betfair Exchange as well. I have logged in on there, so you might see a few of the um, little bets that are going on with that side of it too. But then this is a good time to take stock, right? There are, I guess, hypes and bubbles and all that sort of stuff that will go on throughout the season anyway. But there are, there are I do think, certain times where you just need to sit back and you might have an opportunity to find a few bets. Um, for me, looking at some markets, and especially with the column that I do with Gigi, where I do the anti-post insight, and I might give you a bet each week, there's a handful that are on the radar, a few things that I think is worth looking at. So without further ado, I'm going to share the screen. We'll start with the Supreme. I'm going to run through it. Now, of course, this is all opinions-based. You guys in the comments, let me know what you think on potentially each and every single race as well. I talk about in the past about block bets and doing lots of different ways of betting. There are some opportunities within here where, especially within the community in the comments below, you guys talking about multiple horses can potentially help each other in terms of seeing where everyone else is thinking and seeing opportunities to put some bets on. So I appreciate it as well. I'll read every single comment. I'll reply to every single one if you've got any questions too. But obviously, this is my thoughts and I'm going to have a good go because I think it's worth sharing. So let's do it. Let's um, pull myself onto the screen we have got odds checker up at the moment. So we're kicking off with the Supreme. Let's just quickly run through it, right? So a dream to share, I think most people would have thought was a bad favourite from the start. He's a terribly short price for a horse that had a niggle and we don't know when he'll be out. So line through him. Jericho de Repone, I get the fact that lots of people may have backed this horse at bigger prices in the summer. And I know that Daryl got a bit of stick for putting him up at 12 to 1. But ultimately, he was right to do so. The horse was making an appearance. There was a lot of talk about him. We know that the trainer targets that particular race of horses. Yes, you might have wanted to wait till after the run to have a look at it. But I would imagine if you had waited for him to run and you hadn't got Jericho de Repone in your book, you probably would have been a little disappointed with that newbie run. And I would say with reason, right? I think the clock, it didn't really stack up against the mares listed. Um, it is what it is, right? We need to see what this horse does when he's actually tried i guess the positive would be that he wasn't too keen and was happy to go the slower pace so if he has got a massive engine and he was happy to canter around with them at that sort of speed that's good you get a lot of horses <clears throat> that'll be talked about in terms of workhorses like a constitution hill they struggle to have anything that keeps up with them so this is purely spitballing you'd imagine if constitution hill was in a, a, a trial like that he would have trounced them because he wouldn't have actually been able to travel so slowly, if you know what I mean. But it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. We'll find out more next time out. But I would be wet, like slightly, like I want to say lukewarm, but I want to say wet as well. Wouldn't be so sure on uh, Jericho de Repone at the moment. Mirrors or West, we don't know what's happening with just yet, but there is a two-mile maiden at Cork on Sunday. I believe the horse will be out then. I guess it depends how easy or difficult the race is, and whether he goes for the future champion novice at Christmas. Not even sure if he's in it, but they're, they're my thoughts, right? You should, I think you might see him out on Sunday. There's a few good races this Sunday at Cork. There's a mare's novice's chase over two miles. There's a grade two or grade three super stayers novices race. So we'll come on to those in due course. But there is some good action up. I'm recording this Monday. I don't know the entry. So I am I'm making a few assumptions. But Mirrors or West, I wouldn't want to bet him in the moment. But obviously, there's been hype around him. Ballyburn getting beat by Firefox, who are in the next two in the betting. Maybe was trying to find which is Willie Mullins' best option. Could be that Mirrors or West is that. I'm not completely sold on the form up to now, but it's bumper form. They can improve a lot if we're going over hurdles. Firefox did beat Ballyburn. Gordons are ready for their life at the moment, aren't they? Firefox had had the bumper run. Firefox jumped a lot better when he did over two mile four last season. Looks a more established horse. I, don't, I wouldn't take anything negative from Ballyburn. Um, low head carriage is a tiny bit of a concern, but I wouldn't say trip was the problem. I still feel like we'll find out more about him when he steps up in grade. But obviously, a horse being beat is disappointing. But I, I draw it back to that Fernie Hollow, Bob Ollinger type vibes. They were two good horses. They might want to avoid each other as the season goes on, but I could see both of them running in a um, Ballymore. I could see Firefox not having the reason to step up in trips, so his price might start to condense. But I'd still say there's question marks about trips on those. I wouldn't want to pin my cards to a mask. Firefox was in my horses to follow. I would have had him pinned down as a horse that wanted further, to be honest with you. Um, but that was more maybe because they started him over two mile four in, in, in his maiden. He might be a supreme one. So probably shortlisty Firefox could be an option. 
I'm not sold on Will Mount. I'll put it out there, but they've already talked about him being maybe the Valley Mori type thing as well. So we'll have to sort of go with that. Down memory lane does look like a slog merchant, wants bad ground and would want further. So you wouldn't fancy him. Daddy Longlegs is the fairly obvious one that's going to attract a bit of money now. Was fairly well talked about as a juvenile, to be fair. And I feel like a few people might have said about him for a, a triumph, but obviously they had better options, maybe. I don't know if he had a niggle or whatever, but he was pretty tied on his debut. Never really asked. Um, I know he's popular with a few people, but that's the problem now, right? He's going to start to shorten up just off the back of it. I know there's bits of form with Irish Panther that tie into that Royal Bond that was pretty poor, but Daddy Longlegs is probably an obvious one. Again, you look at the 16s, and I'm talking about block bets, you might say something like a Firefox or Daddy Longlegs could go on the list of shortlist. When we start getting a bit further down, there are horses that have won races. Like the Royal Bond looked a bit weak, to be fair, didn't it? I don't know how many further down you're going to be wanting to look at and think, Mwah, they could be weldies. You could take a punt on a few of them. Like you could take a punt on Slade Steel, who's right, right, right down here. 40s top price. For the life of him, looked like he would want further as well. But did beat King of Kingsfield over two miles. Semi form was franked in the Royal Bond. So, I mean, they might not need to step this horse up in trip. Um, obviously the yard have got Firefox, so a bit will depend on where he goes, but he could potentially be overpriced. But that's sort of where I see it on the, the Supreme as it is in there. I'll bring us on to the exchange just so we can get a bit of a vibe for prices and see where there is money in behind. So like you look at some of these, there's not loads of money behind Ballyburn, but there is a bit. Daddy Longlegs, there is a bit of money, but again, we can see that the market's made. Firefox at the bigger price, he's 10 to 1 on there, isn't he? On odds checker. I know you get the luxury of a cash up, but you can get 14s on it. And there's small amounts, but there is some money queuing up in behind. So there where you can get 100 quid at 14s, I'd imagine someone's back to him at a bigger price is potentially looking to trade as opposed to not thinking they're going to go here. You might be able to get in for a few quid. So who knows? Some of that money might be gone because I might take a bit of that. We'll move on. I don't want to drag this video out longer than it needs to be, but obviously I feel like there are some markets that are worth talking about. So we'll talk about them as we go through. The article's going to take not so much time to talk about, to be honest with you. Uh, I did put Fasal Vega in a double with Gallop into Champ in my column a few weeks back. Um, it, again, from a timing perspective and what's going on with it, Marine National is going to make his chase debut over Christmas. I get that he didn't want to run on the slop. I get that he's waiting. It, it, a lot of it seems dodging to me. Like he didn't want to run him over hurdles. He said that they would have thought they were like they would have potentially thought about Champion Hurdle if Constitution Hill wasn't around. And I get it. Like he's a worldie. So it's not saying, oh, what's the point in taking him because you can't beat him? But I, it's a semi negative vibe. But it doesn't have to be that way. It could be a positive that they're being smart and not wasting a season, which is what he's saying. He doesn't want him to be older. But I'm, I'm lukewarm on Marine National. But he clearly has the ability to win an Arkle. And Fasal Vega clearly has the engine to win an Arkle. I was okay-ish with his, his chase debut, but would potentially want to jump a little bit better. But I feel like it is between those two, to be honest with you. There is talk about Gaelic Warrior could go any sort of distance, but I don't see I don't see how Willie Mullins possibly ever runs Gaelic Warrior and Fasal Vega against each other while they're both novice chasers. So forget about that as far as I'm concerned. There isn't anything else that, as, uh, for me, has any chance of getting involved. Now, JPR1 would probably be the most likely confirmed British runner that's in there. And we talk about these races potentially cutting up. Now, in the pocket, it sounds like they're not going to step it up in trip. That's probably this race bound. So if we start to look at it in terms of a depth thing, you're probably going to have Fasal Vega, Marine National, in the pocket, Ilete Tomps, because Mr. Policeman's just not good enough. And then you're starting to look a bit further down and it could be JPR1. So you might get sub eight runners. They might still pay three places on the day, but he's a 33 to one poke. He's going in the Henry the Novices, Henry the Eighth Novices chase at Sandown on, on Saturday. He could shorten, right? And he could be one of those for the, the scummy each way type bets. But ultimately, I don't want to talk about this too much longer. I'm still Team Vega. Marine National obviously terrifies me because we'll see what he does. But I'm a bit, I guess, nervous about what's going on. But I was already in the Vega camp, right? So I'm probably being a little bit harsh. Champion Hurdle, I don't even want to talk about, to be honest with you. I know what's happened with Impere Pass, but we'll talk about that more when we come onto the stairs and Tiapu because I don't think that Impere Pass is as bad as everyone's talking about. I know people like to write them off, but look, the champion hurdle is what the champion hurdle is. It's Constitution Hills race. Mayor's hurdle is probably an interesting one to look at. Just before I do that, I'll peel us back to the um, article on here, right? Just for the fact of doing it, just for completeness. The mark in here is very much the same as anywhere else, right? And again, for the ones that could come in here in terms of betting in behind, the right ones have a bit of money behind. It's, it is just what it is. I feel like it's a fairly easy market to look at and read, but there wouldn't necessarily be a big in. And when it comes to the mayor's hurdle, there is talk from Riggs Riki through Matt Chapman on the son, his son column that Lossy Mouth sound, they're not rushing her, they're excited about running over because they know it's difficult. In open company, there's a barrage of grade threes that these juveniles can go and run in. And there are options for race horses like her to be easily entertained into it. 
We do get juveniles where they typically would look like they want further. So they, the two and a half mile trip would be good for them the next season. So, I, I mean, she might not stay. We don't know. It is a question mark, but I don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. She's the price that she is. Seems okay. It, it, it does just depend on that, right? The stamina is unassured, but she deserves to have a favourites chance. Now, I talked about this earlier when I talked about Lucia and figures and not having too much to find. Like, Lossy Mouth, even in the comments saying that, I've never said that Lossy Mouth doesn't deserve to be favourite. Is it just is the risk and reward worth the price at the moment? Like getting stuck in, I I don't think it is. I would probably prefer to see her in a race course, and it depends how deep the race is. See her smash up against something, or be able to put some sort of substance to a, a race in there. If she's not able to, and she's entered, and she's just going to go and dot up, then you might then consider to take the eleven to four, five to two. But you might as well wait to see what she's up against first time. If she's in a race where she could smash something up. I would rather lose the price and back her at a shorter price, but have the evidence, if you know what I mean. I'm not really keen on anything in behind. I know people will say the Astro Diamond form and that Hatton's Grace looks good and it's all starting to stack up, but I don't believe Astro Diamond is good enough to win a mare's hurdle. So I'm more than happy to skip past her, especially when she's as low as seven to two. Like that offends me how low she is. Love Envoy deserves to be the price that she is. Um, I'm worried about her being taken over by an improver, but she does sort of set the bar and 10 to one about her isn't, terrible is it um she does just throw in a bit of a ropey race every now and again which worries me but then all the mares could we've had enough time with echoes in rain in the past you wear it well might have a good opportunity this saturday in the fight in fifth i think rabode will go there if constitution hill doesn't and that would be a scalp to take so again like i love envoy probably in and around the right type of price but you're going to get a reasonable size field in the mares i know we're getting a, that bigger price now but you're getting a fifth of the odds now you'll probably get four places a quarter of the odds they're still not going to be sub six to one when they come March, are they? As long as someone like a lossy mouth doesn't flop or get injured. So we'll see where we are with that. I still haven't lost faith in Lucia. Hopefully she runs in a race, dots up. Uh, I, I still feel like she'd end up here, but I just leave it as that, to be honest with you. I feel like keep an eye on when lossy mouth does make an entry, but I'd be, of the ones that are in behind, I'd probably say Love Envoy. And, uh, and you wear it well would be where the head space would probably be. And again, they're relatively strong on the exchange. Again, there's small markets that's in here. There's not a lot of money. But again, Lossy Mouth here is shorter on the exchanges than she is uh, on the sports books. That's typically because she'd be the type of horse, maybe for the volume, that people would want to bet to be able to get out. They'd like a free roll on her. So you'll see later on, I bet a horse that I would potentially like a free roll on rather than leaving the risk um, still sat there. I would think Marie's Rock, like there, I can see the point with this. Like she didn't really like she stayed at Newbury, but I just don't think she's that good would be another case of it. If we do start to drop ourselves down to Lucia, look, there's, there's no positive side for her on this side where people want to better, but she's not that much bigger than she is with the sports book. So she's definitely not without a chance, but obviously I've put her up, so I'm going to still cling to making a case, right? National Hunt Chase is a real tasty race every single year, and there are lots of options to get stuck in early. Three-car brag, a lot of people are talking about this horse. There's a column that's gone out today, which I guess is why we're seeing the influx of blue. I, I'm not I'm not 100% sold, but it has a chance. So again, this is the prices that these are. This could be ripe for a block bet if you've got an opinion. 10 to 1 bar. Favorite de Champdu, 100% has a chance. I like this horse. Horse to follow. I would have thought he might end up in a handicap, but you never know. He might get away with it in here. Definite chance. Free car bag. On paper, definite chance. I wouldn't want to back it. Stay away, Faye. We'll probably go Brown Advisory. And I say probably, we'll definitely go Brown Advisory. I think that is the right race for Stay Away Faye as well. Such a good horse, though, if Stay Away Faye came here, deserves to be shorter. And that's probably in, in and around there. Like, that bottom end would be true if they were coming for the race. The 14 is because they're not coming here. And then you factor that into the price about the right price. Classical Dream doesn't stay. So this is ridiculous. Salvador Ziggy, I never bought into in the slightest. It's a strange one, but again, I could more than happily be wrong about this horse. That could be the right price. The eight to one with Bet365, the 16s could be the right price. I can't get a hand on him. I'm not interested in him in the slightest. Grange Clare West, I'm, again, I'm not so keen on that horse for the race. I have put up Manella Kakuna. I still think that's a fairly strong bet. Um, didn't run this weekend when we're potentially hoping. But we start to get further down. I know there's lots of people talk about Sandor Clegan. He still could be a case. And despite the way that he's run, I think I put the bet on maybe it was 16s, 14s, 20s, 25s, somewhere in around the prices that still quote was the bet that I put as a free bet for someone. I can see him still being in the realms of it. So he might be one of those, again, for those block bets. You pick three or four in here at those big prices. He may be one to go on the slip, but you'd probably want to see a little bit more from him. Um, and I know that Patrick said that he'd like to ride factor final in here, but Patrick's just, I guess, saying that in terms of the temperament of the horse, I don't believe for a second that he would come here. So if we go on to the exchanges for this, this will often be a race that 
doesn't cover so much liquidity. So there was 15,000 matched there on a mayor's hurdle. There's only 7,700 on his eight grand matched on the National Hunt Chase. There's like far less liquidity, I would say, but there is a bit a bit more in terms of clues. So when we see this three card brag side of things, people are betting, but they're trying to bet at bigger prices. We can look at the graphs to see where they've been last match, but you'd want to see that number being lower and closer. So like a Favori de Champ do. Again, it's for small money, so it doesn't make as much confidence. But then you get Manella Kakuna that I fancied, that when there's more weight of money behind them, it is a positive the horse will come here. Stay away, Faye, again. You'll see there the bigger prices would suggest they might not come here. Now, the McNeil's had a chance with 300 through five to run in a national hunt chase, which I believe was where he should have gone. They ran him in the Brown Advisory. That could happen again with three car brag. And I don't know, but I'm just spitballing. Salvador Diggy, then again, I know lots of people talked about him. So you, again, that matches up with the thought process. And then we see other bits here, like Classical Dream, again, matches up with the fact that someone might want to make a case, but just don't believe it. So important to look at both markets, right? Especially when they're falling in line with thought processes. And if they don't, which I'm going to get a couple wrong when we go through this video, we'll try and find out why. We'll be able to ask the questions, right? We'll move on to the Ballymore because this is obviously very similar to a Supreme this year in that we haven't got a standout contender. The ball is open for lots of them, and we can make lots of cases. So we'll skim again. Ballyburn was six to one, got beaten, might not be bad in the hind in hindsight if the form works out. Eight to one about him for a Ballymore now is probably about the right sort of price. Very was like very much was well regarded. So cannot write him off after that supreme that that, that maiden hurdle run. I didn't mind it. Um, eight to one's an okay price. We don't know where he's going. We don't know what he's going to do next time out. Again, value in seeing what he does next time out and taking fours or fives after, I would think, then steaming in the eights now. But again, if you wanted to get involved and you want to stick him in multiples, that sort of stuff, he's definitely one that would have to be on the shortlist. Firefox, again, we just don't know where he's going to go. I would have thought this would have been his trip, but again, we just don't know. If the Supreme ends up the weaker race, he'll go there. If the Ballymore ends up the weaker race, he might go there. He does look versatile enough. But what would you do with him, eh? Will Mount probably will come here. So if you like Will Mount, I don't. If you like Will Mount, 16s about him isn't a terrible price. Um, Predators Gold, I think that's Willie Munnins and um, the Gigginstown lot. Looked like a nice horse. I need to see more to have a, an opinion on that. Down memory lane, I think, again, um, it does look a nice horse. About the right sort of price. Like, you probably want to see a little bit more. And then we start getting to the realms of, like, a daddy long legs, who I do believe now would be supreme bound. But you could make a, a case for him for both races, you, as you often can for these two. Johnny Who, again, they were talking maybe Albert Bartlett for him, so we don't know. And then you're starting to jump a bit further down to bigger price ones where we're just not 100% sure where anything's going to go, are we? Um, so it's hard to do it. But again, this goes back to Ballyburn. If Ballyburn does come here, that maiden hurdle was good enough to suggest that 8 to 1 about him isn't a terrible price. What's going to happen in behind is probably more driven by what Ballyburn does next time out. So there's there's definite value in waiting to see what's happened. Um, I wouldn't be reaching for a bet in there. That would just be my thoughts on it. Again, we'll go skim over to the exchanges to see what they're saying to see if there's any views in there. So, right. So now you'll be able to see a few bets I had. So again, from the horses follow perspective, Firefox, I I've give this horse a chance. So I've, again, I've had small stakes just for the sake there, you know, 25 pound with my point. I wanted to get some money on this market. Um, and I saw some opportunities when I was looking there anyway, like Slade still, to be fair. Um, I think this horse potentially needs to step up. Like I said, could be too big a price for a uh, Supreme. I took a little bit of a go on him at the price because I thought he might step up. I thought he might need it. And I, I guess I kind of thought Jericho de Ripponet or a Ballyburn might take the Supreme by storm and connections might look for an easier option. So I'm not disappointed with that bet. It is sort of where it should be. And then Chapeau de Slay that I put in it. I'm going to talk about him a little bit more uh, for a potential bet, but I, I bet him because I like Chapeau de Slay. I think Chapeau de Slay is going to go the Albert Bartlett. Um, and we'll make a bit of a case for him in a bit. He's a, he's a big old price. He would be one that would potentially go in the column this week. We might want to talk about betting. So that's where I am with it. But again, if we go and look at the prices that are in here, look, there's still money behind Ballyburn. There's money behind Firefox, but it's similar-ish to what the Supreme would be, except the price is a bit, little bit bigger for the Supreme compared to the books. There is some money in and around Predators Gold because he could end up being the horse. We talked about him. And in Atlantic, I haven't talked about him too much, was behind Firefox and his bumper. Um, has, has got some good form in there. Could be the type of horse. So again, it's nothing standing out, glaring that's, wow, what have we not talked about that might be in there. It's all within the modicum of logic. Um, and, and that's fine. Uh, it, again, it goes down to opinion. Some people might have a stronger case to be made in this one than others. Again, look at the money that's mar matched on here. There's 40 grand already matched in this one. When you get a more prominent horse like a Ballyburn, that sort of stuff will happen. If I pull the charts up him, I don't know if this will show on the screen, but nearly £11,000 of that 40000 has been matched on Ballyburn. So you need these short price or these opinion 
priced markets to be able to get stuck in uh, and get some good liquidity in there. Looks a good race, to be fair. Um, at the moment, I don't know where I'd be betting. I, I wouldn't be discouraged with Bally Bones, honestly, but I wouldn't be putting my money down. You've seen the few that I've taken a bit of a swing at. We will leave it as that. Round advisory, novices chase. Look, the, the obvious one is Gaelic Warrior to talk about first because of the fact that he's got a massive engine, but it's not right-handed at Cheltenham. Um, and I'm not going to uh, ever let go of that. And he did jump to his right, even still while going right-handed. So, yeah, that's what that is. Um, I don't know whether he'd come here because it's exaggerated. It's more fences to jump. It's longer to travel. I would see the Punchers Town three miles a lot easier you'd step him up at Punchestown rather than Shelton because you know he'll get it right-handed, whereas will he get it left-handed? No. Turner's would be an easier option. So I'd scrap Gaelic Warrior for this race as far as I'm concerned. Stay away fade probably could be shorter, to be fair. Um, got a feeling this horse is going to run at Tingle Creek, man. I can't remember what the race would be. Um... But, yeah. Stay away fade sets the, the tone as far as I'm concerned. The problem is... Um, the Grey Dawn in form that's been franked in that Haydock race uh, does look good and it could read out really well after. But the performance at Haydock was good, but the performance at X where it got beat by Stay Away Faye was a bit of a conundrum. But Stay Away Faye touched a big price in running. A lot of people thought uh, he was beat and he battled on resiliently. I, I think Stay Away Faye deserves to be favourite for this race. Is in and around about that. Again, if you were thinking of having a few block bets and you wanted to put a couple or a few in this race, I would definitely think that Faye, Stay Away Faye would be on that list. Um, Corbett's cross was better. Again, I just don't I don't like him enough to think. I don't I think he, I don't know, a bit sloppy. I just don't think he jumps well enough to get away with it. So again, where's he gonna go? I'm not 100 percent sure. I think a lot of horses will probably avoid Gaelic. Could end up here. So again, the seven to one could be about right. The 12 to one could be more like the chance, though, because if you had to tell me now. You can bet stay away Faye versus Corbett's cross three miles at Cheltenham in a match bet. I'd back stay away Faye all day long. Um, so probably a little bit short in there. Classical Dream, I think, will end up in this race. Again, I'm not 100% sure about the stamina, but I don't see him in a turn. I don't mean he's got the turn of foot of the age. Um, we'll peel down as well. Like Grange Clare West, lukewarm on the horse. Hermes Allen, I do like. We'll come on to him for the turners because that's definitely where he will be running. Factor File could go anywhere. I would imagine potentially could come here. I know the people say about the JP Corbett's cross Factor File thing. We'll see. But again, is he really going to be winning this race? Probably not. Grey Dawning probably won't. Giovinco, really? I mean, I don't, I don't believe he's that good, but we'd have to see. Potential for the shortlist, I guess. Florin Porter, I've chirped on about the horse so much, right? He, he's not a 20 to 1 shot in this race. Going back left handed, that right handed run was actually really, really good. And to see those quirks and stuff about him was really positive because of the fact that he didn't do it at Cheltenham, right? To see that he still got those quirks in him, but he was so good at Cheltenham is a massive, massive positive. So, again, if you're looking at putting a few bets together, he's 100% got to be there. And personally, I don't see why Favre de Champlain wouldn't come here, given what he did the last day. Might not be the race for him to go and win, but he might end up coming here. So my headspace in here would be American Mike was fairly good beating Factor File. I wouldn't dis like diminish his chances, especially if Favre de Champlain is going to be the National Hunt Chase Horse. So he could go on a short list. I think Broadway Boy is probably going to be more of a handicap horse, but I wouldn't consider him for this. So American Mike, Floor Import with 20s, and then potentially Stay Away Faye would be the three that I would be looking at in this market to have a bet. Now, again, we come onto the exchange, as we can see, there's a bit of money behind Corbett's Cross, so that would suggest they think the horse would come here. Stay Away Faye's got money behind it, obvious reasons, that's fine. There's a bit of money behind Gaelic, but I guess that's people trying to take the punt at 20s odds when he's it's like eight and get 14 on here. Doesn't really match. Look at Floor and Porter, man. There's still money stacked behind him. 20 to 1 with Betfreeze is five. Stupid. If you haven't already, get a couple of quid on. Factor File, again, there's money there. So, again, I know they're both JP, but that, like could be the obvious one. There is money behind Grange Clay West. I'm probably dismissive of the horse, but is what it is. Classical Dream, again, there's small money behind, but probably going to come here. And Giovinco, lots of people like this horse. Again, it's a fairly obvious one. The one that I've talked about at bigger prices, America might be in 42 you would suggest maybe he looks more turners bound. But I guess it depends what he does after, right? We'll see what happens with him and see where he goes. But this is where look at this changes is quite important. You do get the cash out with bookies. But if you're betting a horse at, say, 25 to one of the bookies, but you can get 40s on here, if you're right, you can back them on here and you could lay them when they confirm for this race. If you're wrong, well, you're wrong on the, the bet freeze is five. You might better cash out and get your money back. But if you're wrong on it, you've had a bigger price. So you just have to be right every now and again. But again, if you're putting those multiples in with bet three, six, five, you're not going to be able to cash out of them because you've got the other ones with value. So in terms of doing multiples, probably just have a little check on Betfair and think to yourself, actually, is the price I'm getting worth the value? So I mentioned those three. 
if you were doing a block bet, you probably wouldn't want to put American Mike in is the point that I'm saying. However, you also might want to take the swing. So basically just covering everything there, aren't I? Right, we're going well, I believe, so far. I mean, I, I don't even, I mean, I do care if this is interesting to other people, but like this is, I love this stuff. Like I said, this is the right time to be going in. I've got plenty to talk about in plenty of the races. Champion Chase, I feel like it's a fairly short one to talk about, right? There will probably be some sort of each way bet people want to have a find in here. El Fabiola is going to be seen this weekend in the hilly way. I don't see anything other than him winning. Don't see anything other than John Bond winning in the Tingle Creek. I do believe that John Bond has improved over fences since that Arkle. He was so much better at Sandown. He was so good at Cheltenham. I think he'll be really good in the Tingle Creek again. Let's let and see what he does there. But what's he going to shorten down to? Maximum, like, short price will be two to one. You can still get top price after that. Potentially let him go and win, and then you can still potentially get on him. I don't know if people have backed El Fabiola before, but, like, if I had to have a go in this race, I would say I'd be close to saying it's a coin flip between Fabiola and John Bon who would win this, probably just slightly in favour of El Fabiolo. But prices dictate that there's more of a gulf than I think there should be. So if you had to have a bet in here, I think John Bon's the way to play it. I do think he can... Uh, outdo El Fabiolo, but I do I do believe that El Fabiolo's probably got slightly more chance. Maybe if I was to do it, I'd say 55% El Fabiolo, 45% John Bond, but that does mean John Bond being an 11 to 4 poke is value. And like I say, if he dots up in a Tingle Creek, admittedly, if El Fabiolo gets beaten in a hilly way, which I don't think is going to happen, but John Bond's not going to be shorter than 2 to 1 after, let him go and bolt up in a Tingle Creek and potentially get on him rather than bet him before, I would say, because if for any reason he doesn't do well, then you could get out, or there could be related doubles, couldn't there, for him to win on Saturday and to win at Chelsea. They might boost up to four or five to one, maybe do that. But this isn't going to be a race I'm going to be able to get stuck into for Cheltenham because I haven't got stuck in before. I don't think the prices are really there. But again, in here, you can see there's the, the money's behind the right ones. There's no real interest between anything else. I mean, Captain Guinness is an obvious one for the Dublin chase at Christmas because um, there's injuries with horses in William Allen's yard. It seems like Captain Guinness is going to be the obvious one for that race, but it may be that Gentleman Demi is one at a price that could go well, but he's not a champion chase horse. I just think Captain Guinness, because he's short for that Dublin chase, is the why they're fancying him behind here. He's He's got no chance in the champion chase as far as I'm concerned. So is what it is. Um, again, I feel like it's let semi-echoes here. Look, no one's rushing to back John Bond at the price. People want a little bit more, um, but... No one really wants to get stuck into him, do they? We can leave that one for the time being. Let's move on. It's going to go quicker now because the races start to drop down a little bit. We're on to Thursday and Friday. There won't be so many to talk about here. But the Turners is one I definitely want to talk to you guys about. Because there's been a lot of money for Gaelic Warrior, and I believe rightly so. Look, his chase debut was really good. The RPR he got was ridiculous. He didn't do any more than expected would be the only way to play it down, I guess. Well, not play it down, but just to keep our feet on the ground, right? He, he beat horses by the distance that he sort of should have done, and they weren't really trying their very best to get near him. Now, right-handed, he's a very special horse. Left-handed, he's still a very special horse. And the Turners can be a substandard race, but he's got to be... He's got to be like a stone better than anything else in here to get away with it around Chatham, I think. He's going to lose at least seven pounds of his figures off the back of it at Cheltenham. And then for extra buffer, you probably want a little bit more in there. I, I just, I don't see him being as a novice chaser, right? He was entitled to be more forward in the Ballymore because he was a second season novice hurdler. Over fences, he's probably not going to have the same steepness of an upward curve, right? So yes, he set a good standard now. I don't think he'll be able to step much further forward from that by the end of the season, or he will, he'll be able to improve, but he won't be able to make as much progression as other horses. So that means that he does set the bar, but it's not the normal progression. And what I mean by that is this time of year, a horse will do something and everyone thinks he'll improve seven pounds by Cheltenham. I don't think he'd improve as much as another horse or a typical novice chaser would do. Yes, he sets the standard. Yes, the bookmakers have got him about the right price because you would be fearful. If he went left-handed, he warrants being a six to four poke now. But the reason he is an 11 to four poke is the fact that we all know about him. And yes, he might get away with it. I don't believe that he will. So I, I, I don't want to get involved in him at short prices. Um, there'll be something when we get nearer to Cheltenham, like I did have a tenor on him at 20s uh, on Skybet when the announcement came out from Willie that they were keeping him chasing or going to go chasing with him just because it's sat up there. I can only get a tenor on with him. I did it. I'm not doing this to be like, oh, look at me, I've got a massive price. I'm just saying, if I didn't have that money on him, when it comes to the day, I would probably just have to leave this as a race where I probably won't 
make money by betting the winner, if you know what I mean. I might try and find some other wins, but I don't know if I could. Now, the one that I do think I can get in with, talked about in the pocket. Yes, he might be better stepped up in trip, but it sounds like they're staying at two. Fasal Vega's not coming here. Corbett's Cross could come here. We can look at the exchanges to see what they think about him. Hermes Allen's the one, right? Hermes Allen was sent off favourite for the Ballymore. Now, let that sink in. Impero passed, battered him. Let's not get away from that. It's not the track that ruined Hermes Allen because he battered Habrisco in that grade two before, right? He likes Cheltenham. He's a very good horse, Hermes Allen, on his day. And to win a grade two first time up, which everyone can agree, there were 140s horses in there, although he is better horse than them on figures. They look closer match than they probably were. He smashed him. He smashed him good and proper. And he was he's had a foot issue. Like, he's, there's no way would he have been fully wound up for that. Nickel's horses have been improved with everyone. Like, it was a proper, that was a performance of a horse that is a grade one horse. So, yes, Gaelic Warrior beat him in the Ballymore. And, yes, Gaelic Warrior was very impressive on his debut. But Hermes Allen has clearly proved that he is in the realms of a grade one horse over fences. Now, he's a bit smaller than your typical chaser. I don't mind that about him because he jumped nice enough. Um, and I, I, I do think that Nichols would have learned from last year. Like, they probably shouldn't have run him at Aintree after Cheltenham because... It's hard a few weeks or four weeks after, especially considering he didn't run his race at Cheltenham. They've tinkered with his wind. Cheltenham 100% will be the aim this year. They want redemption for last year. And we know that Nichols improves a horse over fences. It's not to say that Willie Mullins can't, but Willie Mullins does do really well with his novice herders because he gets them, I don't know, maybe better or more fit before. And as I say, Gaelic Warrior was a second season novice hurdler last year. So it is what it is. So, yes, we've got to put a line through Hermes Allen run last year, but this 14s is nonsense, right? The 10s about him is probably still a bit big as far as I'm concerned. I think this horse goes off no bigger than four to one on the day. And Nichols is talking about maybe running the December meeting next week, not next weekend, the weekend after. Like he wants to get another spin round at Cheltenham. The dip has gone from the calendar, so he can't use that. But he's talking about that and then the silly Isles and then going to Cheltenham. Like he, he is going for this race. He's talking about two and a half miles and two and a half miles only. Now, Gaelic Warrior is not going to not go to Cheltenham as far as I'm concerned. But it isn't 100 million percent sure that he comes in here. Now, again, I'm talking about stuff that's borderline irrelevant, but Fasal Vega, say he gets a setback, Gaelic Warrior could go in the arc, all right? We, I'm, I'm sure everyone out there would not disagree that he wouldn't be out of place at two miles the speed that he's got. If Stay Away Fade doesn't run at Cheltenham, Hermes Allen isn't stepping up in trip. Like, this is where he goes. So I think he's a, I think he's a big price. I think he's the only horse that's worth the conversation piece in here. So let, let's pull ourselves onto the turners, right? And you'll see probably why I'm selling it a bit more than I said before. I do need to talk about another horse in here as well, right? This is a stupid price, but we'll come on to that in a second. The Hermes Allen one, right? I backed him after the John Franken because I thought it was a pretty good run and I add him like a seven or eight to one poke after that. You could get, as you see here, I got 12 and a half. I managed to get 150 quid on there. And someone had obviously backed in pre-race and wanted to get out. That's why there was a bit more volume in there. So I, I took it as what it was, right? But I thought it was too big a price. Now, there has been some bits that have been a little bit higher. He's going to sit there for a little while, but his price is only going to condense as far as I'm concerned. And the way that I've spun this is I don't want to have 150 pounds on him in total liability. I, don't, I probably want to get away with him being risk-free. But I put the 150 on. I'm going to lay 100 when he gets down to 10. I might do it at 11. Or ten and a half. I'm gonna when he goes single figures because I think that is inevitable. I think that will happen, and then I'll be able to get most of it back, and then that leaves me with about seven hundred pounds profit with sort of sixty five pound liability on the race. And then when it gets nearer to Cheltenham, I can decide what I'm doing with the fifty or not. But I would happily hold a position with Hermes Allen. I think he's got a chance, and I do think that when he gets nearer to Cheltenham for the extra fifty quid that I've staked, I would potentially be able to free roll him because I think he'll shorten up. So I have bet Hermes. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. He's another consideration for a column this week. Now, how could a tab there, right? is stupid right i'm gonna we, we know how good this this mare was on her chase debut you know let me pull ourselves down to where she is right she like you can see there we can get 60 65 i got 110 was what i backed for a bit 100 and i took a little bit 70 as well because i just wanted to get a bit more than on um, than i had but i'm happy to to lose that money on this horse right there's a there's a that mare's beginner's chase or that mare's novice's chase a grade two on sunday over two miles if she runs in that that's over two miles I, I just I just wonder whether they might decide to stick with the novice chase inside of it, right? It's a grade one, the Turners. The Mayor's Chase is a grade two. It's £30,000 more for a Turners. And yes, I know Kenny Alexander's a massive supporter of the Mayor's programme. And yes, Gordon Elliott probably has already said that she goes to the Mayor's Chase. But the Mayor's Chase is the Mayor's Chase. And Gordon Elliott did win the JLT with Shattered Love. Yes, the Mayor's Chase didn't win at the time. 
But she got an RPR of 159 when she won it. The RPR of Evan Pervious to win the Mayor's Chase last year was 159. So it's not like she needs to run better to win a Turner's, albeit with Gaelic Warrior in the room. But how could a hope at Turba? Like, potentially, she's got to do a little bit more, but potentially, she looks quite good. Ground worries do worry me, but you would see what price she is for the Mayor's Chase a little bit. Like, she's like 10s, 12s for a Mayor's Chase, yet she's this price for the Novice Race, which uh, she's only got one poke at a Novice season. It's over the same trip. It's over the same course. I don't know why she's this price. So I'll bring it back to Odds Checker just so you can see. There's not too many that have priced her up, right? Maybe she's had a few taken off. I don't know where we're sat with her. How far down have we got to go, though? Where is she? Come on, Belle. Where are you? There she is. So Unibet, if anyone's got a fictitious Unibet account, 66 you can get on there. Like I say, you can see the exchange prices, but big prices anywhere else, like 40s, 33s, with bookies you can get some money on, and obviously get a bit of cash up with those. I, I mean, I have, you can see. I wonder if she's in the conversation, right? People might fancy her for a mare's chase, but if you're backing her at 10s or 12s for that, and you've got a, a race that's the exact same type of race, bar the fact that she'd have to take on a Gaelic Warrior, why would you not have a bit of a saver on there? So yes, I know she probably won't come in, but yes, I have had a couple of quid on. Let's move on before we get too excited about a horse running in a race that they probably won't run in. But like I say, I want to share my thoughts, my thinking, so you guys kind of know where my head's at at this point of the season. Ryanair, I'm going to get probably pelters for this, no matter whatever I say, but I do like Stage Star. Yes, Stage Star is much better than Man Cheltenham, and yes, Stage Star has a proper chance in a Ryanair. That's all that needs to be said. Alaho, I do still believe, is the one to beat in the Ryanair. I think the market's pretty much spot on now. I wouldn't have much between the two of them. So 130 and 4 to 1, I think, is about right. I do believe that Alaho didn't show as much in that first run as I possibly would have hoped. But then it was a long layoff, and he does tend to come on for his run. So I'll be curious to see what they do with him after. I don't believe 100% of the old Alaho was there is what I'm saying off of that chase debut, but a lot of people were more positive about it than I was. Maybe I'm being critical because I wanted more because I backed him, but I think they're priced where they are. I think the winner comes between those two. Uh, it does depend where some other horses might go. So there's Protector out that could fall back into here. There's Brave Man's Game that who knows? I mean, surely they go for the Gold Cup, especially if the connection was running in a Betfair chase, but there are horses that could drop back into here. When the non one no bet options come out, it might be worth looking at some horses. Like Protector at 33s, Brave Man's Game is 25. What would they be? 10s or 12s maybe if we're, the non one no bet market was out? Um, and that wouldn't look bad if they did come in. So we'll leave that race alone for now. Like I said, we've already got a bit on Alaho. We'll have a look on the uh, exchanges because, again, when I talk about the reality of where people heads, people's heads are at, you can see what people are thinking. So Envoy would be a popular one. Very dismissive of me not talking about him there. Last year's winner makes sense. Stage Star in and around the same sort of prices, and then Alaho's in and around the same sort of prices. So again, market sort of backs up thought process at the moment. And again, Brave Man's Game, there is money behind him, shorter than you could bet with the bookies, or 25, I think he was. But when we talk about that number, no bet, it could be an option, right? Um, Shishkin could fall back in, of course he could, but the, he's betting Shishkin. I wonder if Protectorat's on here at all. If I've missed him, I'm sorry for scrolling. Um... No, don't see him about. But it could be an option. But if he's not quoted on here, then I guess no no one's really thinking it or getting the vibes of it. But we'll see. Like I say, I feel like the obvious ones are in there. I appreciate it was a pretty good run back, but mm, not lukewarm on on him, I guess. But again, I, I don't, wouldn't be a race. I'd be re reaching up a better now. I would be thinking about maybe taking a bit more of a punt when no one no bet comes out. Um, I'd leave that as that. If you guys have got any different thoughts, then, of course, let me know, and I might listen to them. I also mean that. Of course I listen to them. Right, Stairs Hurdle, nice and easy one. Tia Poo deserved to be favourite at the start of the season, whether Gaelic Warrior was coming here or he wasn't. Tia Poo deserved to be favourite after Philippe did what Philippe did in France. Tia Poo deserves to be the price that he is probably shorter after what he's done to Impere Pass. But I will say, right, he wasn't in my All My Bets video. I did some work on the race Saturday night because ground conditions, I kind of thought were going to be quicker. And that's why I bet Charger. Now, the ground conditions weren't quick. The times were slower than last year in Fairy House. And the race, the Hatton's race this year was a furlong further than it was last year. It was two miles, three and a half last year, two miles, four and a half this year. So all those things play into the favour of Tiapu. Bad ground, slowly run, like slow, all that sort of stuff. At the end of the day, his peak RPR was in the race last year. He first horse to beat Honeysuckle. We've had Classical Dream behind him there. 
maybe i know the freshness is a key thing but maybe that's his optimum trip maybe he's a two mile five horse and he does need slow ground i don't think ground is a complete problem with him but he's clearly not a slow horse that race was run really slow and he did impere pass for toe it is pertinent to remember though right as much as impere pass comes with the the hype and people think that he's going to be good and he clearly is a very good horse i wasn't bad dismissed with his hatton's grace run like i say i i kind of doing the figures i expected tiapu to be capable of beating him um i did end up having a bet on tiapu so again it's bad after time but it wasn't one that i could have talked about in advance because i didn't know the times of the race and the conditions but long and the short of it is i expected tiapu to beat impero pass on sunday whereas before Earlier in the week, I hadn't thought that. I thought maybe at these distances, Impere Pass would do him. But the ground conditions were in Tiapu's favour. Wasn't a bad run from Impere Pass. But in terms of this horse for the stayers, the fact that Gordon's going to send him straight there is a massive, massive bonus, right? From a punting perspective now, you should have got him before is all I would say. I wouldn't put people off betting him now. This Celine might have a flat race. It might just go straight there. But the market's not going to do much more. There will be horses in behind like Irish Point, he might go and win at Christmas in the Leopardstown Crusader. We've got the long walk hurdle to come. There might be something at a price that's got to shorten up. Like you're not going to have everything bigger or everything double figures after. So some horses are going to shorten up. But the way that I see it is we're not going to find out till March any more than we already know now. And I believe that Tia Pu can win a stairs hurdle. Obviously, the worse the ground conditions, potentially the better. But I do think that if the Fairy House race was his optimum trip, a slowly run race there, he's shown speed to beat Impere Pass. Possibly, I wouldn't mind if it was yielding, if it was good to soft at Cheltenham on the Thursday. And it's not going to be any quicker than that. So I think TFP wins the stayers. I'll leave myself as that. Good luck to anyone that's bet anything else. It isn't a foregone conclusion. That's why he's the price that he is after beating Impere Pass. But I've nailed my colours to the master early on in the season. We'll sit with that. And I'm just looking forward to finding out after. Again, exchanges will say the same sort of picture. There's a few people reaching for something at big prices everyone's trying to make a case for a horse away from the front two at the market because people missed the boat on Tiapu. And it's sad because of the Gaelic Warrior announcement coming out. It did halve the price, but he was still an okay bet at that price. But then if you can get four to one on the day or you can get six to one anti-post and you might as well just wait until you know he definitely gets there, you probably are better to wait, aren't you? But it is what it is. Crambo was like a good run in that Haydock race from a bad ride. So he, there will be ones at prices. Like I can see why he's popular in it, but I'm not interested in the race. I would probably want to get some cover nearer the time, but I'll see what I'm doing my position near there. So as I stand on the race, why were people looking for anything away from TFU anyway? But again, I could have got cover. I could have backed Thaleem at 12s, possibly, or 10s. I possibly should have done to get some cover. Maybe I'm being a bit too smart arsey with trying to be cocky with TFU, but we'll find out, right? I can always back Thaleem nearer the day and to, to stake saver, I can lay Tiapu having had a ton on him at 12s. Um, Mayor's novice, I've talked about this one loosely in a few different videos because I've been crabbing Dice like Enos a little bit. I had a chance to run at Newbury again in a listed race. I just I'm, I, I, want, I want her to go in against some company, maybe even to get a bit of a handle on what she's capable of doing. Um, Brighter Days Ahead does look good. I think this is a, a race that I know historically Willie Mullins will pull something out and they could be quite quite good to go into. I, I suppose the one that if I was to have a bet now, and I could probably have a bet in this, would be Jun to Marvel. Um, I think, again, the prices that we've got in here list of all these different bits, I think the 12 to 1 about Jun to Marvel is right. The 20s looks a bit too big. Um, so from my perspective within here, I'm away from Dysart Enos. Brighter Days Ahead does look good. I'm worried about a jumper, but she has got an engine. But I don't, I'm not I'm not entertaining at those prices. I might bet a nearer the time, but I'm not interested in her. Fun, fun, fun was good. The worry is going to be Patrick on her. No offence, but that is got to be a negative. Um, so the way that I look at the race at the moment, if I was going to have a bet on anything, Junta Marvel would be where I want to go. Let's take a look. I might actually have someone Junta Marvel. I think I will. Might stick her in a few little multis or something. Um, but again, in here, right, you, you'd want to see some money behind the horses that want to be bet. But it's a weak enough race, right? It's got a grand more than the National Hunt Chase. But I think Brighter Days Ahead and Dice Art Enos will be chopping up a lot of that. So, again, Mark on the exchanges wouldn't say much more other than we've seen a few horses. None of them are that short, so we can't have been that impressed by any of them. But we don't really know who the like the, the outlier is at the moment. I might have a look more into Junta Marvel. There is a price discrepancy. We'll see where the entries come in for her. But, yeah, we'll see. She's on my radar anyway. Um, Triumph Hurdle. This will be a fairly quick one for me to go for, I think, because... It's a race I would pr prefer always to wait for as a juvenile 
race, I think it's Boxing Day or the day after, in Christmas, that's always, well, say always, it's been a real good point towards this race anyway. And then the Spring Juvenile Dublin Race Festival, like I feel like you can wait long enough for those and you get more information from it. However, I was really impressed with Burdett Road at Cheltenham. Um, will always be, I guess, underappreciated in the market. There was the keenness at Huntingdon, which could be a worry, but was good at Cheltenham. But then that was a quick turnaround. So I just, there's still that question mark around him. Um, and it was a real confident ride from Harry Cobden as well. Whether he'll get away with that in better company is, again, another question mark around him. But I, I think he deserves to be favourite. I don't think he's a bad price at what he is. I don't think he's a good, good price. Like, you wouldn't want to be steaming into him either. Everything that's in behind and everything that's run, I don't have any opinion or anything else. So I'd leave it as it is. Nerbo ring there. You see the Jose O'Brien horse won the weekend. Probably getting nibbled in. But that's what's going to happen, I think, with this market, right? Until we get this race on Boxing Day, people are going to try and find a winner early on. Just wait, bide your time. And obviously the best of the British so far is Burdett Road, deserves his place in there. Um, it, like, it, it is what it is. That's the market. You, I, I think you'd be a bit mad to be punting anything else. But we'll see what the entries do. That might be the time to do it when you get that near Boxing Day time, when you get the Christmas juvenile, where you can find out, right, these have been, in, they're going to run against each other. Maybe I'll take a punt or I'll take an opinion, see even how the race is priced up and then have a look at it. But for now, um, I would be teaming with Burnett Road if I had to have a bet in the race I haven't had any money on him he's in a couple of little small multis um, but again I'm happy with a triumph to wait till nearer the time it's a race that I don't feel like I need to get the winner early on and the only time I ever got close to it was Espoir de Land when he didn't even run at Cheltenham but never mind right Albert Bartlett loads of horses in here that have got chances there is a horse that I definitely want to bet in here um, there are loads you can make a case for um, again, when you look at the betting, like 14's bar with high class hero top prize in there. I think Gavin Lynch put him up. Jamie likes the horse. There's good numbers behind him. You can get 14's. You could be putting these horses into block bets, right? Take three or four pokes at it. Last day, last day of those block bets, probably with the Friday. So you might get the chance to get some money rolling in there. There's loads of nice horses that could be around here, right? The one that I will just spend a little bit of time talking about is all the way down. Have I gone? No, there he is. Chapeau de Soleil. Now, I, this horse was one-time favourite for the bumper, right? Bit of a ropey head carriage, but then he was beaten by better days ahead in a bumper, right? He was beaten by a nice horse. There's some get some keen free-going types, but which would be a concern, I guess, ordinarily. Look at like a Fernie Hollow, the hood sorted him out, and then he was like a two-mile after. But this horse did what he did, and I think he is an out-and-out -out stayer. Now, even in his uh, bumper performance, he stayed on... So like sort of matching pace with the front four, but the front four just looked like quicker horses. Chapeau de Soleil didn't disgrace himself. He's actually entered on Thursday. If he gets confirmed, and my column goes up tomorrow, he's going up on the column this week. So it's a bit of a spoiler alert for those people that want to read that, but he's a better 33s. Now, I know I've bet him in the Ballymore market anyway, but I think he's a bet in here. We'll have a look and see what he is on the exchanges just to get a feel for... Uh, where we should be betting him. So there, like he's 38 on here, so he's a bit bigger, but there's, there's a little bit of money behind. And it is small money, but... I think that's the, the horse. I think there's some pieces between that thirdest race as well on Thursday, which, which would suggest it's been used for an Albert Barlett in the past. But but by the by, Chapeau de Soleil is a bet, 33 with the bookies for the Albert Bartlett. So you can have an opinion on other ones in there. You can see there's bits and pieces for horses in behind it. But when it's 14 bar on the exchanges and Firefox might not even come here, it tells its own story, right? You can take a bit of a swing. You don't need to bet the Albert Bartlett far out. We've seen in the past, you get 25, 50 to one winners on the day. I bet, Kilbrick and Storm after he won the December meeting, I believe it was, at 25s, and he went off at 33s. He was available at 50 on the day. So sometimes getting early is not the best way, but this is why the anti-post bets can be good. I've got an opinion that Chapeau de Slay will win an hour at Bartlett. He may come out and flop, and then he still may come and come good in March. So he would be a bet that I would bet and I would leave unless someone told me he's missing Cheltenham or he's not going for this particular race. I'm betting Chapeau de Slay and the Albert Bartlett. I'm happy to be free throwing pelters for that, um, but I'll make a stronger case for him in that column, I guess. Can't we ever go at me for a 33s one point, can you? Right, let's move on. Gold Cup will be the last one. I and mean, we'll do the mess chase as well. Gold Cup's a good one to talk about, though, because Jerry Colomb could be coming over the King George. There's lots of information we found out about it. As far as I'm concerned, right, Gallop in Deschamps does still set the standard. He is still the horse to beat. Jerry Colomb does look like his biggest danger. And then fast or slow has clearly proved that he's got the capability. Like, you can't beat Gallop in Deschamps twice and then we not enter the conversation. I'm still lukewarm on him. I still don't really believe those efforts are taken on peak Gallup in Deschamps. Um, punches town after Cheltenham and then this is the beginning of the season. So when he has got to take on peak Gallup in Deschamps, what's he going to do? 
Uh, runs well, Cheltenham though, so he is where he is. I'm going. I'm not. I would never even have any money on him. I don't think uh, could be a bit of a mistake there. Now, Lahon Press going to go for a slightly different approach, but Lahon Press will make Cheltenham. Lahon Press has been nibbled from twenties into sixties. Lahon Press feels like the horse that's the bet at the moment. Um, probably only going to shorten up. Probably going to be a bit of a wise guy one, but. Yeah, I mean, I like Gallup in the shop. Uh, you can't really steam into him. Wouldn't have as much confidence as I had in him last year. Is he going to go as short as six to four as last year? Probably not. We've been commentating the price of him being this sort of price. Well, yes, probably. Can you wait till the day to probably bet him in a similar price? Probably as well. So maybe you want to get him in a few multis or any of that sort of stuff. But yeah, I'm like, I think he's still the one to beat. The market's probably got it right, but there isn't much, right? He may be beaten this year. And I think the market says that. Lahm Press would be the one that I would be looking at if you were looking to steal a price, one that could potentially shorten. So again, there will be a lot more money matched in here. There's a lot more depth, but again, the markets will sort of tell you where horses should be. And then we'll move on to the mayor's chase, right? So I've touched on how could the Tabar, who is going to be a lot shorter in this race than she is for the Turners. Uh, so we could talk about her in here, but for me, she's still got to go a bit to prove her ability in here to be this, like as low as a seven to one point for this top price 12s. But we'll see, right? She probably is going to go here. She is where she is. But th- again, just remember, she's 66 is with Unibet for the Turners and she's sevens for this race. That doesn't mean that they know where she's definitely going, but it might be that's where she goes. But there's a big disparity between the fact that this is exactly the same course, exactly the same trip as far as I'm concerned, and it will take about the same performance. Historically, maybe not, but, but with the seven pound hours, like it was about the same sort of performance to win either race. This is a grade two. That's a grade one. So enough talk about that. Allegory de Vassi can't go anywhere else. Dino Blue could go somewhere else. She might not stay the full trip, but we'll see. Impervious is injured. She's not going to come in. So it's not a race I really want to get into. Limerick Lace, I do like as a horse. She proved that she stayed the last day. It depends what the conditions of everything come out at, but I, I wouldn't want to bet anything in here. I'd happily wait till nearer the time and, and see what's going on with it. There's only 7,800 on here, Matt. So again, it's about the same money as the National Hunt Chase. So in terms of people's priorities and looking at stuff, that no one's really interested, are they? There is money behind Halka to Tabar. Like people were happy to bet her. Um, yeah, she, I don't know. It's a, it's a lukewarm. But like I say, I've, I've taken a bit of a swing in the turn. I'm just being honest. Um, wouldn't want to have a bet in there. So that wraps up the video, right? Let me pull my beautiful face back on the screen in case any of you are still here. So we've wrapped it up, right? Just under an hour. So I think that's quite good. Um, hopefully that gives you an idea of what well, it does. It gives you an idea of where my head's at, where I'm thinking. Hopefully it's made you think about some stuff as well. Again, this isn't to say you need to think the same as me, but if I've said stuff in there that basically implies I think this horse has got X chance in X race, and you now think, no, hang on a minute, Dave, you're, I don't don't agree with you. I, I disagree with you. Hopefully that helps as well because it bolsters your own opinion on things or it makes you question things that you hadn't questioned before, which is exactly why if you guys are still watching the video now, please do make sure you comment on the video because it's important to have these discussions because I'm not going to be right about everything. I won't have thought about things that you guys have and I'd like to hear those things about it. Last one on that, how could it happen? I think she might need a bog as well. The yielding race at Fairy House, which she got beat, could be a bit of a concern, but I don't even know why I'm saying that now. We're going to wrap this up now. I'll get it published on the channel as quickly as possible. I know Rant and Racing is not out tonight. Again, people are still watching the video. It's back on Thursday, but I just wanted to make sure I got some content out to you guys. So anyway, be lucky, go well, make sure you've liked, commented, and subscribed, and I will see you guys all again very... I'm looking at the end recording button. I'll see you guys all again very 